in 1938, uh, when they had, uh, and I remember this uh, pretty vividly, Kristallnacht, when the synagogues were set on fire, including ours. Shops were vandalized, including my father's shop. So in 38, things got, uh, got pretty bad. I also remember my parents uh, writing to consulates of various countries to try and get out of Germany because we, I think they realized then that we couldn't go on living there any, any longer. So this was the, the memory we had, but we, we, wherever we wrote, we, nobody would take us. We heard through the Bush Telegraph that the uh, secret police usually came during the night to arrest the, the Jew, Jewish males. And my father and I, therefore, uh, did uh, spend the next two nights of the uh, 9th and 10th of November in uh, households where there were only women, uh, single women. Uh, and, uh, in fact, the Gestapo did not come to our flat to arrest us, uh, even in our absence. Uh, why, we, we shall never know. Uh, I think probably because we were not listed in the Jewish community lists as being members, so, and probably there were too many Jews in Berlin to arrest them all. Two cousins of my mother's, for instance, who lived in the provinces were both arrested and thrown into concentration camps. There was a Jewish uh, shop in the, uh, on the ground floor of our block of flats, and I had been out playing chamber music that night, and when I came home, I noticed that there was a crowd of people in front of the shop and uh, helping themselves to all the goodies inside the shop, and that the uh, shop window had been smashed, and they were very noisy and unpleasant. And uh, <coughs> my father had, in fact, telephoned the fire brigade earlier on, saying that it was dangerous to have uh, uh, open fires in, in, a, in a shop selling alcohol, but no, no avoiding action had been taken by a fire brigade because the instructions from high on had been to let the so-called will of the people dominate. Kristallnacht, 9th of November, going to school on the underground, U-Bahn. Um, and I remember coming out of, out of the station, walking on the way to school, walking past the synagogue. And I couldn't understand it. I mean, you know, I hadn't listened to the radio early in the morning. And I... I remember it like yesterday, walking along the street, and the synagogue was on the left in flames with Nazis all around, shops opposite, to Jewish shops, were looted, things were thrown out, out of windows, broken glass, everything, and things were thrown out of, um, out of the shops onto the onto the street, laughing away. I couldn't understand it. I mean, I just, I just couldn't put two and two together. I, didn't, I did not fathom what was going on. And I walked to school, I think probably about a five-minute walk or something, um, and remember being met at the door by a teacher who said, there's no school today, go straight home. Terrible things have happened. Don't talk to anybody, go straight home. Don't let anyone speak to you or accost and take the quickest way home. And that's exactly what it what was. When I got home, I suppose I was informed of what happened. I don't actually remember the rest of that day, I must confess. But I do remember the day, two days later, my mother, my father really didn't venture out very much. It wasn't safe. But my mother and I sort of walking around and, and 
hearing people and speaking to people whose husbands have been taken away to Buchenwald, to Dachau, the concentration camps near Berlin. I went to school on the morning of the 10th, quite normally. And I was very lucky. I was met by the one teacher who was a bit of an independent spirit and always very kind. And there were others, but he was particularly outstanding. I wanted to know, sort of, I've often wondered afterwards whether he was actually waiting for me because he didn't look too surprised. And then what was I doing there? I've come to school, sir. Can't remember whether we said sir. Um, don't you know what's happened? And I must have looked suitably mystified. So he proceeded to enlighten me about the synagogue having been set alight. There a number of people having been arrested and homes being attacked. And you'd better go home and don't even think of coming back to this school again. After the Crystal Night, my mother and me, we had the visa ready to go to England and we were packed, but uh, we didn't want to leave my father. But on the Crystal Night, it was terrible. Um, they came to the housekeeper downstairs and she had to show them all the apartments where Jewish people live. They came up to our apartment, but my father was not at home. My father didn't look very Jewish. He was walking around the streets and he didn't come home till two o'clock in the morning. Therefore, my father wasn't taken to the, to the police station. On, on the next morning when I went out, I couldn't see a Jewish man on the street. They were all taken. Yeah, and then my mother and me decided we have to leave and leave my father and my grandfather and an aunt behind. And we left Vienna on the 12th of November. Well, funnily enough, uh, on the, on Kristallnacht, so, uh, one of my, one of our custom, one of my father's customers who was still in touch with us, her son was actually, her, I'm sorry, it's her son-in-law, was actually in the SS. And they had come round to the block where we lived and people were pointing up and shouting, there's Jews up there, there's Jews up there. And she had said to him, if you go round there, and if you go into houses, I will personally make sure you won't live. And they passed us by. I mean, we weren't there anyway. They came, the Gestapo came afterwards and searched. And then they came back. And my mother said, my husband can't speak to you. He's very sick. And they said, perhaps we could come to uh, Gestapo headquarters the next morning. And like the good little German sheep we were, we went to Gestapo headquarters the next day to report. And for some unknown reason, they said, well, you'd better go home. So it, it was luck, really. Everything was luck at that time. On the way to the kindergarten, this uh, train, which was above ground, past the synagogue, which we had been to. And on the day after Kristallnacht, Kristallnacht was on the 9th of November, so on the 10th of November, we were on the train and we saw the synagogue burning. Now, naively, I think we thought, well, 
There were some fire engines there. They'll probably put the fire out. Later on, we were told by my parents, much later on, they weren't there to extinguish the flames. They were there to make sure that no neighboring property caught fire. In fact, they were watching. The police were watching. Everyone was watching. And of course, all the scrolls and everything, all the lovely ornaments and things in the synagogue were burnt. And interestingly enough, this was in the Fasanenstrasse. And now when George and I, or Marianne and I, go back to Berlin to talk to children there at the Jewish Museum, we get put up at the Savoy Hotel in the Fasanenstrasse, diagonally opposite where the synagogue used to stand. They still have one or two pillars of the old synagogue still there. It's now a Jewish cultural center. And uh, my wife often chides me and says, you know, Peter, every time you pass, you always refer to seeing the uh, synagogue burning. It did leave an indelible impression on my mind. 